Comics, they used to just be thought of as junk, trash, only for kids, but now they are part of an industry that brings in more than $400 million a year. That is not even counting what is sold at auction. Speaking of auctions, we're here in Manhattan outside of Heritage Auctions, where we are about to meet Marty and Stephen Seamus. Now, they are collectors who have a group of works that's coming up for auction later this month. It is expected to fetch a record-breaking $10 million. Let's go inside and meet them. Wait, they have bags. So Marty, Steven, it is the summer of the superheroes in the movies. I mean, we've got Spider-Man coming out that came out this week. We've got Batman coming at the end of the month. You have artwork from the comics from both that you're selling at auction. Did you just time this perfectly or what? Not really. We've talked about this for about six months now, and it just happens to be. I, did, I didn't know the timing of the two movies. You guys have about 38 pieces you're going to be selling in total. How long have the two of you and, and the whole family been collecting? Uh, about 25 years. Or did, you, did you get him started? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, think take so. the credit. I, I take, take it some, now. I could definitely take some credit for it back in the day. Yeah. Right. All right, Steven, so what's your favorite piece that you guys are selling? It would have to be the Spider-Man number one. Sorry. It's just it's just such an iconic piece. It's the preeminent piece of the last 25 years. It represents a character that's known all around the world. And your dad, though, I hear, has a soft spot for Punisher. Is that right? Yes. The Punisher has been on my wall in my office. I've been looking at it for 20, 22 years, and now I, would, I look at an empty wall. The two Bane pieces you have, now Bane is a villain in the new Batman movie coming out. How do you think those are going to resonate with folks? They're everything that you could want in a piece. Uh, they're by an English artist named Glenn Fabry. They're the first two appearances of Bane ever in comic books. You did not pay for all of these pieces. You actually traded for some of them. I would trade with Todd especially, uh, baseball cards, Mickey Mantles, Wayne Gretzky's. You have never sold anything at auction before and they're estimating you guys could reap, what, two to four million from your I collection? So. I, <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. I, I mean, I never thought of money. And you're doing it, you said, and I asked you why now, you said it's not about the movies, it, it's about your, your grandkids, it's about the next Yeah, right, right. My wife and I are both healthy and uh, my grand, I have seven beautiful grandchildren and what I'm going to do is set up uh, college funds for them. I'm going to set them up for whatever they need. I'm guessing that's the Hulk and I'm guessing he looks pretty angry right there. Absolutely. Uh, Todd, the, the two characters that he worked on the most while he was at Marvel were, were the Hulk and Spider-Man. So this combines two of the characters that he's most well known for in an unbelievable action pose. This is the cover of a generation. This is the most important cover of the last 25 years in comic books. It's a cover that's been used on everything from t-shirts to all kinds of Marvel licensed products. It's the preeminent character of the preeminent franchise. Now Heritage already had a record-breaking auction in February, I think just under nine million. Mm -hmm. But you actually think this collection with some of the works from the Seamus family could top that? We do. We're, we think 10 million is a reachable goal for this auction. 10 million. So what's different about it? I mean, what, what in the collective zeitgeist has made people just so excited about comics? I don't know about everyone, but you can certainly tell from the movies, like with the Avengers doing one billion dollars. That's pretty exciting. Kids love these. I grew up on them. And nowadays, if you're a parent, you see little kids at parties wearing superhero costumes. And so the fever is still very much in play, even to this day. And in terms of bidding, though, let's talk about how the internet has changed actual bidding on these items. People online right now are placing bids for the live auction in July. Right, the auction just went live today and already we've had thousands and thousands of bids in the first few hours. But the final price won't be set until the actual live auction at the end of the month. No, we'll, we'll be bidding on, online all month. And then the day before the auction, we kind of reset, make sure that the people who are going to be in the final running are qualified. We wouldn't want some 12-year-old placing a bid and, and, and ruining everything. And then the day of the auction, whatever the high bid is, that would be the starting price for the live auction component. Okay, now these aren't the real thing. These are replicas. Yes. Where are the originals? Yeah, in a vault in Dallas. A vault in Dallas, very mysterious. Well, then you guys don't mind if I, like, just take one of these for safekeeping. But you said this is the most valuable. Is that right, Stephen? Yes. Yeah, well, really good to meet you guys. Good luck with the whole auction thing. Hope it works out. Seen a bit. Are you going to go after her? I'll go after her.